Hi there, thanks for joining. Let's paint this photograph. It's a nice color study. And you can paint along with me if you like. You can find the link to the photograph in the description of this video. And I'll also add a list of the materials that I use. But please keep in mind that this is just an indication. The list of colors, for example, you can use other colors as well. If they are similar, no problem at all. Let's start with the background. When we look at the background, we see that it is a little bit gray, bluish gray. And I happen to have a color that looks a little bit similar. It's bluish gray. And if you don't have this, just mix some uh, titanium white and black and a little bit of blue and you get the same results. For instance, uh, ultramarine blue. For this background color, I just took a, a tear off palette. So I, uh, that I used al also for uh, making the sketch. So because I want to make a big pile of paint for the background. I added a little bit of titanium white to my bluish gray. And I check. It could use a little touch of yellow. So I'll grab a little bit of cat yellow light, just a tiny, tiny bit. And that's with acrylics, eh? uh, because acrylics dry so fast. You just take some colors on your palette that you need for this session, for this part that you want to paint. So I have a lighter version and then here I see some slightly darker parts. So I'll add a little bit of the bluish gray to a part of my mixture like this. So that when I'm painting I can easily switch between those, these two colors. That's good enough. But now that I think of it, maybe it's a good idea to make these colors as well right away, these uh, reflective colors. Uh, because we have this mixture and when we adjust it a little bit with red and with yellow, we can get good results, I think. So I'll add a little touch of red, pyrrole red, to my palette, like here. So I'll put a little bit of uh, pyrrole red over here. And I mix some of the gray mixture through that color. So you see, you get a, a sort of pinkish, purplish, light purplish color. And it's nearly good enough already for most parts. So, but we have also have some darker parts. Then I'll add slightly more of that red color. A little bit darker, that's okay. And then we have a very dark part, the occlusion shadow, you see. So for that, maybe I just uh, take some red, uh, the pyrrole red, and I just add a little bit of black to it. I had it already on my palette because of the sketching face. I just mix it with each other like this. And then we take a look. And uh, now I have to add a little bit more red. It was a little bit too black still. It's good for that very dark part there and the very part, the dark part over there. Some color of this paprika or paprika, I, I don't even know how you say it in English. Uh, uh, some of that red color gets reflected strongly here in the cast, in the cast shadow, uh, in the reflection. You see a lot more of red. So, more red. I'll add that to my dark mixture here. Nearly, nearly there. Let's take a little bit of this light mixture. Yeah, that's reasonably good. And at the edge it gets a little bit more to watch. I see some orange influence, so to speak. So I'll add a little bit of red and a little bit of my yellow together and put that over here. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Now let's make some variations for the yellow reflection. I hadn't planned to do this, so now my palette gets messy because I thought I would only do the background color, but okay, no problem. So I have yellow, you see, of course, the yellow is way too vivid and way too bright for this reflection. So again, I'll take a little bit of that bluish gray color from the background and we'll mix that. And then you'll see you get sort of green color, of course, because uh, in, the, in the gray part there's, of course, some uh, blue in it. So you see that's way too green, but that's no problem. We just add a little bit of pyro red to destroy that. Oops, that's a little bit too much. So that green gets a little bit destroyed. Yeah, that is, that's, uh, that's good enough. 
okay? So you see there's hardly, it's, it's a very gray color. And you see how lovely it looks on the palette. These colors, you can put this in a frame already. This color harmony is fantastic eh, when you look at this part of the palette. But uh, of course we uh, want to paint. So let's make a little bit of a darker version. So I add a little bit of orange for to to this part here. And then we see that's uh, let's just take a little bit more. So like this, a little bit orangey, and then I'll add a little bit of the black to dull it down. You see, so that's a slightly darker gray than what I had here. That's good for some parts here. Okay, I love it. And then we have a very dark part. And that's quite, that's a sort of brown, you see. So when you add red and yellow, when you mix them together, and you add a little bit of black, or you can also add uh, blue uh, or something. There are many ways to make brown brown colors but uh, in this case this is what i had on my palette so i'll use what i have so this is a good color for there and at the edge again there it turns a little bit more towards yellow so i'll add a bit more yellow again also uh, maybe a little bit of red but i'll have to check first oh we're already getting there so i'll add a little bit more so like this yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so just so now we have all kinds of colors that we can use that makes painting easier. Uh, let's start with the background color. I get a reasonably big brush, of course, because it's a big, big color plane that we do. So you see, and oh yes, I made my canvas gray because I don't like painting on white canvases anymore. Uh, but uh, that's no problem if you don't mind. But um, I like a toned canvas. I've already made a video about it. It has many benefits. For instance, if I don't cover the whole, uh, the, the whole surface with my paint, instead of bright white we will have something like that gray shining through yeah, at these parts that i don't cover and that way my painting still looks finished in the end and when you have a white canvas and the white parts shine through it gives the impression that the painting isn't finished so that's a different feeling, that's, that's one thing. The other thing is you can uh, paint from, uh, on a white canvas you can only go darker, you can only add darker colors. On a gray canvas you can add darker colors, but you can also start painting with light colors. And... Uh, and another thing, you don't get blinded as much by the canvas uh, when you paint on a white canvas. Yeah, the, the, that white is a little bit blinding. And uh, light colors on a white canvas, uh, light colors already look dark. And on a gray canvas, light colors look light. Good. Uh, oh, the negative space here in between this, those two paprikas or paprikas or paprikas I don't know exactly so like this then quickly I just wipe my brush a little bit on a paper towel and I go over to the darker color that I had made for just for this slight part here in between on the surface just like this you see it's very subtle you hardly see it but it is there and it makes the background uh, looks um, it makes the background a little bit more exciting to look at of course so 
Yeah, and you can as well, of course, you can add a little bit more when you, when you look here. Oh no, that's my tape that makes it look a little bit darker. But to make it a little bit more spicy, you can add a little touch of a darker color if you like, like here. It just makes it a little bit more vivid. Okay, uh, now I go quickly go to the reflection colors on the table. So I wipe my brush clean. Uh, I don't have to uh, rinse it with water or something. Just wipe it clean at the paper towel and uh, just add it to another color. So I'll start with the red one first. So I'll just add it like this. And you see how strange it looks when you don't have all the other colors surrounding it. You, you can hardly believe that this will that this is gonna look right in the end. I, <laughs> I can hardly believe it myself, to be honest, but that's the trick with our brains. We just have to go on painting. Now I use the darker color, uh, by the way, for this uh, more shadowy part here. Uh, but our brain gets tricked very easily when we don't have all colors uh, on the canvas. So don't mind if it doesn't look that good at this stage. Just go on and try. I take a slightly a smaller brush for the darkest parts. So I'll just uh, as well add it here in the paprika here. Oops, uh, that wasn't... I messed up a little bit like here, but okay. Don't mind. So, and now I take the lightest color that I had for here. You see, this is the more colorful color. This one. And I just mix it slightly through the colors that I already had, like this. You see? So, like that, and maybe here a little bit as well, that's enough. Okay. Uh, then I take a little bit of this color and that color that I had here to make a soft transition so I can put it over the two colors, you see, like this. I rub it in and there we have it. Now I go back to my big brush again, I wipe it clean at a more or less clean at the paper towel and then uh, don't rinse it just go to the next color load your brush and uh, well start adding the color just make it wet so that there's paint and you can adjust the paint and you can adjust the paint that you put on with new paint so for instance this is now all one plane, I made one plane, and now I'm gonna adjust it with this sh shadow color. But first I'll block in this part, that's the, the main shadow color part that I see, like this, you see? And also keep in mind, okay, there, there we have a transition, and here I see this kind of form, you see? So, and yeah, that, that's enough already, I think, so like this. It's, it's very subtle, but eh, maybe you hardly see it on camera, but that's the same on the photograph. You hardly see difference. Now I take this dark brownish color. This part, the darkest part, it's good enough. So like here, and then we see it a little bit on the paprika itself, so we can adjust that later on if necessary. But there we have our darkest color. Now I wipe my brush uh, uh, clean a little bit and I get over to the more colorful color, this one. And I put it next to the other color at first. I just, uh, I don't blend them at this stage. I just put them next to each other like this. Now I'll blend, uh, I'll mix this color with the previous color, so we get a transitional color, so to speak. And I put that on top of the two colors, so I just rub it in, rub them together, and you see you have a smooth transition. And we can do the same for this color, 
and the shadow color of the yellow that we had there in the reflection just so that was this color you see now I have a transitional color a color between this one and this one and I just put that on top of the two on the on the on the edge so to speak so now you have a softer edge so this looks very very weird we all have to agree <laughs> but we don't we don't mind and maybe I've made a lot of mistakes could be very well possible because you never know with me but I can only tell if the rest of the colors are on the canvas in a later stage so at this stage I don't mind I just go on and that's difficult when you just start painting when you're a beginner you don't have the confidence to go on and you may think oh maybe this is not good I want to adjust a little bit and uh, you go on and on and you mess up and uh, le just leave it at this stage try it and where's my water <laughs> I've lost my water. Oh, it's here, over here. Now I do have to clean my brushes and rinse it with water as well because I want to premix some other colors. And when I lay my brushes down somewhere, the acrylics in the brush will dry. So uh, then I destroy my brushes. So I'll premix some colors for the yellow paprika. And uh, then later on, we can do the red one. Get yellow. I'll add some pyro red to my uh, palette. We think, ah, it's a yellow paprika, but the yellow already leans a little bit towards orange. But you see these dark parts are a dark version of yellow, an orangey color. And a useful color for this kind of stuff is burnt sienna. Titanium white. Like this, ultramarine. You never know. Not too much. Let's just start with the darkest color. So I'll just take some yellow I'll put it over here and I'm just I'm curious when I take some of the burnt sienna and I hold it here you see it's already very close to that color so when I add a bit of burnt sienna to my yellow try and watch what happens you see we get a color that is already very close to all these shadow colors so I'll keep this I put it over there and I just take a little bit of that and I'll add more of the burnt sienna and it's very nice let's take some more yellow and adjust that with more uh, how you call it burnt sienna almost there see mine is a little bit vivid I'll add a little bit of ultramarine just a small amount just to dull it down a little bit and it is just, you can hardly tell, but that's it, you see? So now it's better. Here it gets a little bit lighter, so to speak. So we can, we can make another bit of this color. So I do the same. This time I do it with a little bit of white. It will make the color lighter and also tone it down a little bit further. Yep, okay. Good. So I cleaned my palette knife and now I'm gonna make the lighter yellow parts. So I just grab some yellow. Up. We can add a little touch of this uh, mixture just to make it a little bit more towards orange. Slightly, slightly, slightly. Let's take a look. Hmm. It's not that bad to be honest. So I'll just keep it like this. And then I make a lighter version still for there. I'll just add some extra yellow. So I took something of this. I add a little bit more of yellow because the color gets more intense. So it gets lighter and more intense. You see, like this, it's good. And then last is it gets a little bit lighter so I add a little bit of white to this mixture so you see we have shadow colors some and we have some lighter colors I like it so when I look at this this is my darkest color at this moment I'll put it next to the color we had here you see I see it a little bit over here in between there so and like here it gets a little bit more brownish more dark 
I add a little bit of red and a little bit of blue again to yeah to make that color that I had already I restore that you see so I can make that transition between the two this dark color I see also here so like this this form eh? I look at the form of the color so at the edge here I just wipe off again my brush I go to the lighter variation that I had here and I put that next to it you can hardly see the difference I think but it is there so like this and now I wipe my brush off again and I go to the lighter variation and but I don't blend the two colors yet so I put them next to each other like this so no blending at this stage so it's something like this that's good I'll put it over there as well now I go to this part here we have also have this color like this so and it gets smaller when we go over here so and now it's time to uh, blend the two colors so I'll uh, grab a smaller brush because uh, it's a little bit uh, refined so I take this darker color and I mix it again with the lighter color so I get a transitional value again and then I start blending by just going in between the two colors and then I get to this color again because there has to be paint on your brush when you do this and again yeah because only when you have paint on your brush you can adjust the colors on the canvas and you can manipulate what you have so like that okay uh, I'll stick to the smaller brush for this part here so I wipe it off a little bit and I go to this color the lightest of the shadow colors that I made so I put it over here I put it over here on this part you see up there we go um, I, I put the layer next to the previous layer so I don't blend and here also this is shadow color here so this dark relatively dark yellow you see it over here so like this and here again it gets lighter because there's uh, light and uh, light gets uh, this part is lighter here's the shadow part okay so now I uh, quickly go over to here and then we see that I think it is about this size like this now my brush is a little bit small actually for this part but okay I'll stick with it now now that I'm at it see you up now here we can do this make that a darker part already you see so like this and again it looks very weird let's hope that it will uh, work <laughs> we don't know uh, I make a transitional color again between this one and this one I mix them together and now I can easily blend the two so there we go again And I'll do that here as well. So you see, and that works. And of course, this works best when the paint is still wet. No problem at all. at least that's what I think now a slightly darker version for here so now 
I'll get to a lighter variation, that's this one, uh, for this part. So I'll stick with my small brush. And there we go again. I just add the yellow next to the colors that I already had. So I have this color, I mix it with the previous value. I'll uh, grab my big brush for the big, big parts. So a lot of paint and I go over here and I just add it here. And maybe it's a little bit too yellow, so I'll just add a little bit of this mixture to it. So like this, more of an orangey color. So, and this one, I, with my big, big brush, I just now uh, make a transitional color again and I'll just wipe them through each other. So, like this. Then I use this orangey color and this one again for here for the shadow part. So, this is shadow, shadowy color, but not as dark as this one. So, it's slightly lighter. So like this, and here we, to be precise, we have more, we, we, we could use a little bit more of ultramarine, to make this more of green shadowy color here and here. A little bit of ultramarine, slightly bit of red. Here you have reasonably grey shadow. There, so like that. Okay, now I go over to this one again. So we have that for here. So the nice thing is that I can jump from the... Uh, because I pre-mix the colors. I can jump from one color to the other color all the time. So again here I just wipe it in, now I get that slightly more orangey color for here. This is nice with a big brush because you can make these big forms like this. Whoop. Just add a little bit of that orangey shadowy color here, wet and wet. And again here we go, the side of this fellow. little bit more orange so like this and here it gets lighter so again mixing like this oh yeah then here it's slightly more orange again so that's that's where it bends a little bit uh, bends a little bit inside and now the lightest part add some of the very yellowy color for the parts where I see it so you see like this and this here a little bit and then we go to the very lightest part and that's a little bit more like this just rub it in let's connect it again with a transitional value like this Here again, we can make transitional values as well. So, add some white to this, and this maybe. And here again, also, we see some reflection like that. And also, you see. The paint 
sometimes doesn't cover that well the first time. So uh, you can put on a second layer of paint when the coverage isn't that good. So for here for instance, now it covers, now you see it's starting to work. So like that. Oops, like this. Here it's a little bit more orangey. Like this. Whoops. Here it's more orangey. Pop up again. There even more. So like that. Here we go again with the lighter color. So just go over it again and then you have more coverage. This one is a little bit too dark by the way this shadow over here so I'll just make it slightly lighter like that well so the second layer covers better than the first layer is always the case now we get over to the red paprika so uh, uh, same procedure I just take some of the red so just pyro red I think uh, we can get uh, can do a lot with that I'll add some ultramarine blue. Let's see what happens. So like this, mm, nearly there. We are nearly there. Maybe I should have used a little bit more of magenta. So it is a little bit more of a purplish color. This, this magenta color makes it lean a little bit more towards the purplish side. So like this. And then I add a, slightly t a slight touch of ultramarine again. So with this red paprika, we will have that problem again of the transparency. So make enough paint for two layers. The camera shut down, so I had to change the batteries. But now, um, uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, the lightest part. So just grab some white. So, yeah, for the lightest part this is good, but we also need a slightly darker part, so I'll add more of this mixture to it. Good. And it's very weird, when you see this photograph you think, oh, boring. But when you start painting it, you see all the challenges it offers. It's gigantic. And we like that. I'll start off with the darkest parts, I like that, so something like this. I just put it in again here, you see it doesn't cover. So we just have to use a second layer later on, absolutely. You see, whoop. Now we'll go over to the darker, the color that I can use for the big parts like this. I just use a big brush now. See, here it gets slightly lighter, here it gets darker again. So I'll add a little bit more of the darker color. But that's very easy to do when you have these colors pre-mixed on your palette. Here we get to the light part. So just do it like this. And again here as well, we have this kind of form. And then it is a little bit like this. And again here we just put in that, for that form, that dark form. 
just we so we look at the form of this the shapes of the of the of the value this, this part is lighter because you have reflective light re light that reflects back into the dark part i'll wipe my brush cl clean and i'll get over to the lighter color so here i see a lighter part as well and then here like this we can go uh, i think all the way over here maybe i think that is already good for here here it gets slightly lighter there it gets darker again so like this here it gets slightly lighter so now i wipe my brush clean and get the lighter color uh, i should have done that a little bit more careful in the first layer so there is something of that lighter color but here as well and uh, again don't mind that the color doesn't uh, um, you 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 won't get the a good result right away uh, be again because of the transparency of the pigments in this case uh, these 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 pigments especially magenta and uh, pyro red itself isn't that opaque as well but these pigments are a little bit uh, transparent so that that's why it doesn't cover that well the first time but we don't mind we can go over it uh, especially the darkest parts you see oh here again here is also a part that sticks out a little bit good now we get to this uh, fellow this part this here I see a slightly lighter part again reflection uh, what am I doing yep oh I was it was good like this and this and here we get light lighter parts I'll put it next to it so here here I make a uh, transitional color that slightly darker color that we had I'll put that in between so like this and like this so that this form bends a little bit like this but again it doesn't work yet because because it doesn't cover the dark color doesn't cover then the lighter part here again I'll add it to the side here you see it is a slightly lighter part here at the edge of that turn now I get to the lighter colors, so I'll get this mixture. I'll add it a little bit here, maybe it's a little bit too pink. So I add a little bit of uh, yellow to it as well. Uh, it's difficult to see now, of course. So like this. Here also. I just do it a little bit wet and wet. So. Now I step over to the lightest color. I just add it in globally like this. I will adjust it in the second layer. First layer is just uh, dropping in the colors, the, the values at, the, at some spots. Okay, so now it's dry and I'll give it another try. First, the darkest color again here and a little bit here and a little bit here like this so second layer always nice to do because uh, then things start working a little bit of this okay so now let's get to the next color yeah, we can use a big brush again. It makes my life a little bit easier. See, so it, it looks totally different second time. And 
It's so weird how we get tricked by colors that aren't good. So again, and now I'll add the more red part like this. Here, you see all kinds of things happening here and here and here. I'll clean it up later on. At this stage, I just want to put it in. So that's a transitional uh, color for here. It's light. And here as well. See? This shape. And here again. Okay. This is here. Well, I made it a little bit too vivid so I'll now I just wipe the colors together so uh, at the edges so you see and uh, then I go over to the lighter colors again I should have add a little bit of yellow over here so this is still wet so I can easily add this over here and over here so you make a slight transition you don't just throw in a light color like uh, this you you make it uh, you can do that now and you can connect it to the colors surrounding it then it will get a little bit more shiny so, there's always a transitional phase towards the shiny color, so to speak. I'll connect it again. Here slightly lighter. Here, so like this and here. And I still, it lacks a little bit of yellow. So, I'll just add it wet and wet. Here is the same thing, a little bit of yellow is lacking, but like this I can manage that. So a little bit of the red again. Here is also uh, the slightly lighter. Well, I think, uh, well, maybe I'll just some parts like here we just add a little bit more light just slightly but still when you look when you squint your eyes and you look at the colors you see that they're actually actually uh, quite close to each other huh? so exaggerate it too much Let's make some space for the green of the stems. So uh, again, I'll add some cat yellow uh, middle this time. Cat yellow middle. And I think we can do this with ultramarine blue. Sometimes I have to make sure if the cameras are working, still working. That's the difficult part of making videos about painting. Because you don't look at the cameras, you're just busy painting and then Sometimes you forget the time and sometimes the batteries of the cameras are empty or the memory card is full, that kind of stuff, all kinds of difficult stuff. <laughs> Look, I accidentally mixed this color, so <laughs> that's finished, that's a sort of a local color. Thanks, sometimes it's easy in life. <laughs> now we just uh, add a little bit more of yellow 
for some of the lighter parts and then we have to mix some darker color then we uh, grab some more ultramarine little bit of the yellow again yeah now i'm gonna mix this sort of lighter color and also we see reflected a little bit of yellow into the stem and here we see a little bit of red reflected into the stem but uh, well uh, first things first here I have a little bit of that green and I just add some white I think yep okay so a light variation well the rest we can do as we go along mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, let's start with some dark color. Is still recording? Yes, it is. Okay, so here we have some of this stuff like this. And here we have this fellow, so like this. Just put something there. We can adjust it later on. Then the dark part of the stem here on top. So dark. Up. See, that's nice. A little slightly darker part here, maybe. And here as well, we have a dark part. Here it gets more of that red, that reflected light. I will add it shortly. So first, let's put in this, this, uh, this stuff. So like this. See, and now I'll adjust it a little bit. A little bit of red. I'll add a little bit of red to it. As you'll see, you can hardly see it, but it is there. And, and also, the same, almost the same, I can use for the for this for the for this part here. A little bit more yellow in it, but also a little bit of red. You see, so the the, the yellow reflects back at the. Uh, at the downside of the stem and here I see a little bit of that yellow so now I have this on my brush I think okay let's put it at the spots where I see it so this little brownish color I can also add here and when I make it darker I have some of the burnt sienna and some of the ultramarine here I can make that dark thing there on top and the darkest part here doesn't work that well it isn't that opaque well, maybe something like this. Um, and then uh, as well, I'll add some more of that ultramarine to this mixture to make this slightly darker. To make some of the shadow colors here in this thing. Okay, let's go over to the next value. The value that I accidentally made that was reasonably good for most parts so I can add it here I can add it here so like this and I can add it here and here we get more and more yellowy part so I just add a little bit of that, this already maybe let's make it a little bit lighter as well so yep just do it like this it's, it's fun and I add it a little bit here as well so just a little bit of working wet and wet and then on top of this thing the more yellow color yellow green light yellow green like this and there it gets more of that darker green slightly darker green this goes like this see whoop and then of course in the end we can add the light variation The darkest green I have is here, then around here, a little bit around that brownish color that we made. So like this is still wet luckily. And the outside of the stem on this side also has a little bit of a darker touch to it. And now I go to the lighter green. So yeah, it's also fun to do these kind of paintings. So painting is uh, really fun and it's easier when you pre-mix colors. Then you really can focus on painting. 
that's way more difficult if you don't pre-mix and you have to mix uh, all the time in between. Here's a little bit of yellow. Here, the, this, this, this green gets a little bit lighter and a little bit more blue. So maybe I'll just add some of this mixture. This, this is a little bit lighter and more to the blue. So I add that to what I already have. So maybe like this and here on the stem goes like this and like this, I think. There's more light. I can build it up. Eh? So I just add a little bit of it. So like this, not too much at one time. And again, here we can add a little bit more of that white light color. Again, here again. You see, I think that's enough. Well, and uh, of course you can do all kinds of details if you like. It was a short color study, but you can do all kinds of details. You see here that lighter red part there with more of an orangey feeling to it. So I'll add a little bit more of orange and I'll add that here. You see, it's a little bit lighter spot and these are tiny details that sometimes hey, you, you don't have to do much and it, it, it makes a difference. And of course you also have here yeah, some lighter parts on that yellow. It has a slightly lighter part here. And of course I can mix a color in between to just make it work together with what I already had. But this is just to indicate that, of course, you can go on uh, more, you can more, uh, make more details. Another thing that's maybe fun to do, uh, while we're still at it, that drop, that's, uh, that, uh, that drop that we see, and it's not that difficult, because it's the same color as what we've got here on top, like this, and then it goes like this, I'll just uh, add that so on top of the light color and now I get my smallest brush the brush with only one hair so and now I add a very light color to make that reflection in it you see and you can do that at other spots as well but uh, you get the idea and uh, in the middle of that thing here, in that orange thing that I made, there it's, uh, it's slightly, even slightly lighter. So I just add a little bit of a lighter color, you see? So you can do all kinds of stuff. That's up to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.